I'm James. This is my 1992 BMW E36 running the 2.5 six cylinder engine. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your oil filter housing gasket, which is this little chap. Let's get to it. So my car, like a lot of 325Is, runs the M50B25 engine. And as you can see here, there's a couple of things already missing. Unfortunately, I had a bit of an incident earlier in the week and the car overheated. So I'm in the middle of another job replacing my water pump. And I thought, while I'm here, I should get replaced this oil filter housing gasket. There's always been a bit of a leak down the back from here. This is your oil filter housing and the gasket sits in here against the block. In order to remove it, there are a number of things we need to remove. Some of this I've already done, so there's a pipe that comes over the top here, which is, would normally be there. You'd need to remove that. Then we're going to need to remove the air box. I need to remove the alternator, which is back down here. And then once all of those things are out of the way, then I can get access to the six bolts I need to be able to pull this filter housing off and replace that gasket. As part of this process as well, you'll also likely to re remove the radiator cowl that sits over here and the fan clutch assembly. Um, but as I said, those things are already done because I'm in the middle of another job. So in order to remove the airbox, we've got two 10 mils here, one there, one there, and then we've got some clips here, and then it just lifts out. Recently treated myself to one of these. It's an absolute lifesaver. What a thing. Just unclips at the back and then let's just release here. There's a pipe down here that we need to just prise off as well. There we go. And then just wiggle it. And then finally at the back here, there's a temperature sensor coolant line type thing again just a 10 mil on that there you go some kind of air temperature sensor that I think and that comes the air box and then what that's done is given us lots of lovely access to be able to get to the alternator and to get into the six bolts that we need to be able to get to to pull this housing off. Next up in the process is to remove the alternator. Now, because I was doing some work on my water pump, I'd already pulled this bolt out, but it's a 16 mil, it's a long bolt. Uh, let me just get it out. So it's a good size, and that releases one part of the alternator, and then there's another one down there, which I haven't done. So let's get to that one. Um, upgraded the tools for this one. That was a lot harder than I'd, I'd hoped for, but judging by this bolt, I can see why. And it's pretty grim here, although fine there. I don't know why that was so difficult. Right, let's get the rest of them removed. Okay, with those two bolts free, the alternator is now effectively only connected by the electrical connections on the back. Um, which we're going to so have to deal with. Having first made sure that you've disconnected the battery, uh, which in the six cylinder cars is at the back. Um, we've got then two final connections here. One is a, a negative lead, one is a positive 10 mil on the negative. So let's see that first. Potentially should have done these before taking the alternator loose, would have made it a bit easier, I'm sure. And then the 13 mil on the positive. Cool. There we go. Again, super important that you've disconnected your battery before doing this. If these wires were to touch, who knows what would happen. And then it's just a case of lifting out your cables, trying to get it so you can see. And then alternator out. And again, now giving us even more room. And you can see here now, where I'm getting this oil leak. This is all black and sludgy, and this is not on the front. So there's definitely something going Last on. Last thing there. to do now is just to remove this electrical connector here. Uh, so let's do that. Just a typical screwdriver in here to prise off that clip, he says. There you go. 
try not to lose it and then just pull your connector off and now we're free to take this off but what we must do before we do any of that is actually take the oil filter out and make sure this is clean so I don't lose too much oil down the side of the block. So for the oil filter housing, 13mm socket, shouldn't be too tight, it isn't, look, there we go, yeah there's the o-ring there, just there, and then here's your oil filter. So I've now cleared that up and now we, I'm ready to remove this whole thing. One point to note is that the power steering pump down here is going to be still attached to this whole piece as, we, as I'm removing it. And I need to be careful not to stress any of the power steering lines, so just be aware. You, you could remove it, but it looks like it involves removing pulleys and all sorts of things. And because I'm not needing to replace anything to do here, I'm just doing the gasket, I don't see a need. In terms of bolts then, we've got one tucked in a recess here, uh, call that six, five, four, three, two, and then one just sort of back here behind where this sensor is. I'm going to undo those now and then let's see what we've got. So that's all six bolts removed. It's worth noting that there are three different sizes here. You've got a very long one that goes in this top position here. Um, you've then got some mid-sized ones, which are this sort of length. They go here and here. I guess that's position three and four. And then you've got some shorter, three shorter ones. The two down at the bottom. And then another short one that goes in this uh, hole around the back. But now with all bolts removed, you should be able to remove this and then get to that gasket. I'm just going to put a tray underneath to catch any oil uh, and we'll then right, see what we've got. Let's have a look. So this presumably has been on here ever since it left the factory, which in this case is of 32 years. So is it going to give up? Okay, I've missed one bolt. Yes, yeah, so there's a 13 mil bolt right down at the, below the power steering pump, right down the bottom here. I've just loosened it and look, that's made that much easier. So let's uh, wind that back out properly and get under it. Okay, there we go. Right. And that is our oil filter housing loose. Just super conscious of those power steering lines. As you can see, I've just bungeed off this part here to make sure we don't put any, or I don't put any pressure on those lines. And here's where that gasket sits in this recess here. And here is the old gasket, which actually doesn't look too bad, but it feels very, very brittle in my fingers. And I need to. So it's definitely not coming away easily, so I'm going to have to get something onto that to get it. Let's get the screwdriver. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's plasticky. So I'll put a link in the description for the gasket. I got a Febby Bilstein one. I can't remember how much it was. Some pounds, maybe seven. Uh, I'll update. But anyway, this gasket definitely needing a change. There we go. So lost its flexibility and yeah, it's pretty hard. A quick clean off with some brake cleaner. So with that all cleaned up, I'm going to now fit my new gasket. As I mentioned, it's from Febby Bilstein, Bilstein. I'm going to put a little bit of oil from the oil filter around just on it, just to sort of ease it into the, the channels. Um, 
I suspect I don't need to do this, but it feels like the right thing to do. And then just pop it in here. So it's got a nice recess for it to sit in. So it should go in really nice and easily, which it absolutely does. And then that now in, I'll just release my bungees and put everything back together. There we go. Just going to check that gasket's OK now I've done that. Yeah, that's all sat seated really nicely. So with that now on, we need to get the six bolts. So for example, this very long one goes in this position here and we just start zipping everything back up. So for reassembly then, uh, firstly, don't do what I did and forget the 13 mil bolt at the bottom. So that I've now put in. And as I say, the, we, I've put all the bolts in based on their size. So we've got those three shorter ones that go two at the bottom down here. This is a short one, that size. Uh, goes in that one. Another one that size here goes in the one next to it. So that's positions five and six if one is at the top. Then we've got the third short bolt, which is round the back of that electrical, must be oil temp sensor. And then we've got the two medium sized ones that go in this position here in the middle. So this is positions three and four there. And then that one there. With those bolts in, it's time to torque them up. Torque to is 22 newton meters for these oil filter housing bolts. Let's get my torque wrench set up. Those bolts torqued up, it's now time to reinsert my oil filter. The car is due a service, so I will be getting a new one, but I haven't got one right now. Quite a lot of oil's drained out of that. So just pop that back in, pour in my oil. So then cap, oil filter cap back on. I'll talk that up in a second. And then the final thing down here before we start fiddling with alternators is to remember this connection for this, which I believe is the oil temperature sender. It's got a bit of oil on it. Let's clear that up on and then get that small that metal clip, pop that into, try not to ping it off into the engine bay. So just where we are, oil filter housing on, bolted in and torqued, seven bolts, 30, all 13 mils, 22 newton meters, oil filter is in, need to torque the housing, put that back hit, uh, on the connector here and then alternator comes in next. Next up then is the alternator. I've I, I put the connection bolts, um, sorry, nuts on the back here for safekeeping. So we need those and then connect up the electrical connectors first and then install the alternator. I've put some copper slip on that lower bolt because that was really awkward pulling that one out. So hoping this will make things a little easier. And then the upper bolt, which I've also put some copper slip on, goes in with this pulley. There's a notch on the back of the pulley here, which lines up with a little cutout in the face of the alternator there. So let's do that. Okay. And then pull that out. So line up that notch, line up the bolt. There we go. Let's just get them tightened up. Torque specs for the alternator bolts are 70 newton meters, or at least this top one is from the Bentley manual, but I'm going to do the same for the bottom bolt.
Next up is reinstallation of the airbox. Firstly, we've got our temperature sensor to install around the back. That's just this bit here. So that goes back in and it's held in with one 10 mil bolt, which is here. And then it's got a interference fit down at the bottom on a sort of rubber foot. Just gonna get in like that. And then also We've got to get our air duct on it in the front here. There we go, it's in. And then we've just got two 10 mils on the side here. And then once that's done, just a case of popping these clips back onto the MAF. And there we go everything back together when we started this video. So there we go guys, that's how to replace your oil filter housing gasket in an E36 1992 on the uh, 2.5 litre engine. Hope you found that helpful, if you did let me know, send me a comment and good luck with your E36 projects. Thanks and goodbye.